Welcome to the B.F. Anderson Technical Report for June the 17th. Peter Lynch, I hate to keep hitting y'all with his quotes, but they're so good and they're so true. Actually, I'm reading another book right now called Hedge Hunters that uh, talks a lot about great hedge fund managers, which are nothing more than portfolio managers that can go short and do different things and are really not regulated. But anyway, Peter Lynch says here, in this business, if you're good, you're right six times out of ten. You're never going to be right nine times out of ten. Boy, I sure know that to be true. This is a very difficult process. You know, one of the things that this new book discusses is, is that if you know you're wrong on an investment, you need to get rid of it quickly and just move on. You can always buy the situation back if it improves, but you're only going to be right about 50% of the time in a bull market. So let's get into the bull market itself. Here's the NASDAQ. We continue to see an uptrend here. You know, we're making the higher highs and the higher lows. Uh, the 10-day is above the 50-day. This is a positive pattern. So we're good there. Mid-cap's a little different. Kind of rolling over a little bit. Uh, basically got a break below the 10-day. The uh, somewhat violating, uh, violating, but holding steady. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but it doesn't look constructive. Here's the New York Stock Exchange, kind of same thing. We're kind of seeing a little bit of a rollover here. These stocks have been hot for a long time. These are mainly banks and, you know, a lot of oil stocks. We'll talk more about oil again as we get into the video. Small cap stocks, you can see here we rallied to a new high, pulled back. We broke below the 10-day, kind of trying to stabilize in here. Like the mid caps, nothing to really worry about. It's just not as constructive as I would like. S&P 500 continues to look good, close to making another new high. Patterns kind of tightened up in here. That looks very constructive. You're holding above that 10-day moving average. S&P 500 looks good. Now, the new index that we've added, which is actually an ETF, is the Russell 2000 Growth ETF. We're seeing some improvement here. Not exactly knocking the, the doors off the barn, but it you, know, you can see here we've had a pretty steady downtrend since February, since around February the 10th, and uh, the growth stocks have been underperforming, but we're starting to see some improvement here. Now, this is the greatest indicator in the world right here. This is the 35-week moving average. Look how, you know, when you take the NASDAQ and look at it on a daily basis, it looks like a roller coaster. Well, when you look at it on a weekly basis, it's pretty darn steady. It's staying above that 35-week moving average. Really looks like to me that this is a long-term bull market. Now, on the aggression index, we're seeing some improvement there as well. We're, you know, we're close to 200 on the ratio. Now, realize this is a ratio of the NASDAQ compared to the consumer staple stocks. So we're, we're just trying to see, is a risk on here? Is there aggression taking place? Well, we came down and broke below the 40-week moving average, stabilized. Now we've gotten back above the 10 week moving average and that is a basically a buy signal we don't want to wait you don't want to say okay well you know i, I don't want to fool around with growth stocks right now i want to wait till they're up here well i don't know i think you just take the indicator you look you take the chart in front of you and that's what you deal with but so far this looks pretty good now on the three economic indicators we look at again interest rates continue to stay mind-bogglingly low now, it's 1.485 is the yield on the 10-year Treasury. Now, I keep an eye on the 10-year Treasury. Now, the price of oil is really starting to perk up here. It's gotten back above 70, actually hit 75 this morning. So, you know, the oil industry is somewhat going through a renaissance. Financial stocks kind of rolling over with interest rates. Uh, not a whole lot going on there. New lows, no problem. We're not seeing a spike above 40 new lows. We're in good shape there. Now, on the uh, inverted yield curve, again, we just want to keep an eye on it. But we also want to keep an eye on the direction. You know, do we want to see an uptrend in this particular line? Yeah, yeah, we, we do. We want to see an uptrend. But so far, this just looks like somewhat of a minor correction. Uh, you know, we've had a major up move here. But realize this indicator only really comes into play when we invert, which is, you know, down here. Uh, like I say, you get the inversion, you get the recession. You get the inversion, you get the recession. It tends to be a leading indicator. The sentiment readings are still somewhat elevated. Uh, this is the bull-bear ratio, uh, AAII. 
uh, we're, you know, we're up, we're up in the high ground here. So, you know, a lot of optimism. Same with the put-call ratio, same thing. This is more of an institutional optimism reading, you know, the big boys. And uh, everybody's pretty optimistic, and that's not really what we're looking for. We want some pessimism in there. Now, here is the ratio where we're comparing junk bonds to treasury bonds. Now, when junk bonds roll over and come down, it usually means that the economy is slowing and people are worried about defaults. However, we, you know, we're not seeing anything like a downtrend. Now, we are seeing somewhat of a double top here with a lower low. The ratio is starting to deteriorate a little bit, but not enough to be concerned about. It's not like we're calling a recession here. Volatility index is good. We're still below 20. Uh, there's just not a lot of volatility in the market. It's been very, very slow. Now, I just wanted to point out the value line geometric index. We haven't looked at it in a good while. This is a monthly graph. I take it all the way back to 1991. Now, the reason the value line geometric index is important is it's very broad based. It's, it's, it's probably one of the broadest based indexes out there. So it kind of just gives you an idea of what the average stock is doing. So the value line, which is the average stock, is broken out after a 23-year consolidation. This thing has been going sideways for 23 years. Now, all of a sudden, we're getting a breakout here above that base. And so the old rule is the longer the base, the greater the race. So we got a good long 23-year long base. Does that mean we're going to have a 23-year up cycle? We could. Now, Advanced declines. I wanted to show kind of this is a little bit of the problem we're having here. This is the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line, which is measuring on a cumulative basis, you know, stocks that are advancing versus declining. So you can see that steadily uh, for a good long period here, more stocks are advancing than declining. Whereas on the NASDAQ, we're getting somewhat of a sideways action here. We need to see this break out. So, you know, we had a nice up move in the NASDAQ stocks. But that all kind of petered out around February the 10th, and we're going to continue, we've been continuing to move sideways. We'd like to see improvement there. Now, I also wanted to point this out because I get a lot of questions about Bitcoin. You know, whether you believe in uh, technical patterns or not, it, it's just a, there's just a pattern out there called a head and shoulders top, where you get a shoulder, a head, a shoulder, and then a break below the right shoulder. It's kind of a negative sign. So Bitcoin is on a head and shoulders top sell signal. So we're also starting to see where the where the this particular cryptocurrency is making lows and then lower lows trying to make a a high here but we just made a lower low here. We'll see if this thing is a false breakout or not. But I wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole. Now, on things I would be looking at. Uh oil is looking real interesting here. Now, what I did is I took this monthly graph I went back and did a 96-month moving average. And why 96 months? Because that's eight years. Uh, the typical business cycle is four years. This is a long-term snapshot we're, we're doing here. So what I've taken is two business cycle periods, which would be 96 months, and have noticed that over the years that, you know, when oil gets back above that 96-month moving average, it does kind of give you the feeling that maybe this the price of oil has put in a low and we're going to start moving higher. You know, who knows? We could see $100 oil. We could see $150 oil. But I do know as I get into the top five here, now realize the top five is not a buy list. What it is is just a way for us to see what are the hottest stocks in our database because it kind of gives us a uh, an area that we need to be thinking about. So let's get into it. Here's Marathon Oil. You know, holding above that 10-day moving average, had a nice gap up here on heavy volume. Some institution came in, bought 50 million shares or group of institutions. This is a flag formation. If it breaks out on the, to the upside, that's very positive. This is Cleveland Cliffs, which is steel. Again, we're seeing the really the, the economically sensitive stuff has really been leading this market. So here's Cleveland Cliffs. Again, we got a big gap up here. This is somewhat of a failed breakout so far, but it's holding the middle ground of that of that gap up. So it it continues to look okay. Now here's Continental Resources, another energy exploration company, making an all-time new high today. Again, the gap up, flag formation. You can see it's 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 confirming to the upside. This looks good. 
Callum Petroleum, same thing. You got your gap up, you got your flag formation, it's breaking out to the upside. Oil stocks are just incredibly strong right now, which is a discount. The market is discounting something here. Now, here's Devin. We own this stock. We got the gap up, the flag formation kind of petering out. You know, I wouldn't really recommend this stock unless it breaks back above 30 and gets, you know, it's basically got a base going here. I would want to see it confirm above that base. So all in all, that's everything. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.